Hello everyone, this is Brian James from rhino3d.com and in this V5 video tutorial I'll be talking to you about texture mapping and UV space. So I have a model of some garden shears and I'd like to put a wood texture on the handle. First I'll go into rendered mode in the display panel and you can see that everything is just white here. If I zoom in on the handle you can see this edge because in my shaded mode I've changed these settings to use surface edges as well and that allows me to show you that there's a seam here in the poly surface so the handle is a poly surface made out of a whole bunch of different surfaces I'm going to go into the panels drop down menu display my library and dock this off to the left the render content folder has a whole bunch of basic materials in it with texture maps in the materials so I'll go into wood and I'll drag and drop bamboo onto the handle. And you can see that that bamboo texture doesn't line up across that seam in the poly surface. So if I go over into the materials panel and select the now bamboo material that ends up there after the drag and drop, in the color channel there is a texture. And that texture is this square image scanned photo of bamboo and it's being tiled over every surface in the poly surface independently. And I want to change that so that every surface is used in unison for how this texture gets mapped. So I want to change the texture mapping space. Let me go back into my display panel first and I think I'll disable shadows. I don't need those as well. I just want to see that texture for now. And then I'll select the handle, go into Properties, and it's the third icon over, third button over there, Texture Mapping. So when you select something different, you'll have a different texture mapping control, so it's per object, per selection. And you can see there are a whole bunch of choices here. So I'm going to start by going through the primitive options, like Box and Sphere, and then show you the more advanced ones. First let's look at box mapping. So I'll click on Apply Box Mapping up in the Texture Mapping section and up in the command line now you can see we're asked how to make this box map. So I'm going to choose Bounding Box and then leave it on World and also pick it as a capped box. And If I rotate around now you can see that the mapping of this bamboo texture has changed across the surface. If you select the object, you can click on Show Mapping, and this displays the mapping widget. So here we can adjust the size of the box or the rotation of it, and that will change how the texture gets projected onto the model. The projection of the bamboo image is now being controlled by this box. In the case of box mapping, it projects from all six sides of the box in unison. So when you have a doubly curved surface like this portion right here, it's projecting from the top and the side and it doesn't quite look right in this location on the curved surface. So I don't think for this form box mapping is, is going to do it for us. I can select the object again and delete the mapping. And if I deselect, you can see that it goes back to the default of surface. Next let's try spherical mapping. And up in the command line you can see more choices for how to create this sphere. I'll choose bounding box again, also the world coordinate system. Let's display the mapping widget so we can see that it stretches to the size, the bounding box size of the object, so it kind of makes a, an ellipsoid or pill shape here rather than a sphere. But we can still move the mapping and although that looks pretty cool, it's not what I'm going for in this case. So I don't think spherical is going to work for us either for this shape, so I'll delete that mapping. And next let's try cylindrical, and I think this will be the best out of the three primitive options there. And up in the command line again, we have a choice for how to create this cylinder. I'll use a bounding box, world coordinate, and also cap it. And then I'll display the mapping widget, and you can see that cylinder. In this case, we'll rotate it, I'll hold down Shift to keep it straight, and then scale it 
in two directions like this. And this is pretty close. If I zoom in here, you can see that in some views it doesn't look wrong. And perhaps having a cap on it is making it a little bit a little bit worse in this case in the double curvature area. But I still don't like cylindrical here because it keeps the texture completely straight, linear, from a top view, and I want it to sort of follow the UV space of the of the surface in the middle here, of that bend. So I don't think cylindrical will do it for me here either, so I'll delete that. And there's one other primitive mapping option that I'll show you here, which is planar. If I click on planar, you can choose how to make this plane. I'll use a bounding box and I'll use the world coordinate system and also the UV space. And planar's a little bit easier to understand than the others in that it just projects from a plane. So as we get along the side here, it just stretches, stretches that texture out. And if we rotate, we can change where the stretch is actually going to occur. It's projecting from that direction. And in some cases, planar will get you uh, a good result, a usable result fastest, because you can just align it to a particular view. But for this model, for this form, I'm going to use a more advanced mapping option called Unwrap. And if you click on Unwrap, you'll be prompted in the command line to select seams. And I'm going to select these three seams along the edge here in the poly surface. And these will be allowed to rip apart when we flatten out the UV space. So I'll press Enter after I'm finished selecting those seams. And you can see how the texture is already flowing without interruption across these two surfaces in the poly surface right there. But how do we adjust how the texture is laid out in this new custom UV space? You have to select the object and then click this icon in the texture mapping section. It's for the UV editor. And the UV editor prompts you to drag out a rectangle. So you make one click for one corner. And then if you hold down Shift, you can keep it as a square and then another click for the second corner. And you'll see this. You're now in a UV editor mode, and this is the flattened UV space. This is the render mesh of the poly surface flattened out. And you can select it and adjust how it is aligned in relationship to the texture in the material, like this. And in the UV editor, you can choose whether or not to use the material or use a texture. If you use a texture, it will by default go to this grid texture. But if you use the material in the preview, you can see how it's going to line up. Now this flattened UV mesh, this flattened render mesh, is a mesh object. And you can do whatever you can do with mesh objects in Rhino. You can turn on the control points, and all of these control points can be moved or straightened with set point or smoothed with the smooth command. Um, so there's a lot you can do here. I simply just rotated it to get the grain in the direction that I wanted. And once you're happy with it, click Apply in the UV Editor dialog there, and you'll exit out of the UV Editor. And now this poly surface has a custom UV space. And that custom UV space will be used on any texture in any material that gets applied to this poly surface. So if I take, for instance, the cherry material here and drag and drop it onto the handle, it uses that custom texture space automatically. In this case, the grain is pointed in the wrong direction. So I can quickly change that as an object property in the texture mapping section. I can go down to UVW rotation and just rotate it around the z-axis by 90 degrees. And now the texture is matching up along the long axis on the handle. So that's an introduction to UV mapping and texture space in Rhino. This is a pretty important thing to get right for renderings and having realistic textures in materials. If you have a spot in a material in a model that doesn't look right, 
you can try those primitive methods or the custom unwrap method to get it to look right for your rendering. If you want that flattened UV mesh, you can also extract it with, I believe the command is extract UV mesh. And then that UV mesh can be exported as a mesh object if, for instance, you wanted to uh, laser cut that shape. The last custom texture mapping method that I didn't show you here is called custom mapping. And custom mapping will use any single surface that you have. So let me take this UV mapping method off here. So I'll delete that. So it's back to regular surface. And then I'm going to extract as a copy the center surface and just scale it up like this. I'll go into wireframe mode for a second here. So this single surface I can use as a custom mapping method for my poly surface which is right now in the middle of it. And you can do that in texture mapping and then click on this little rubber ducky icon here, custom mapping, and the command line will prompt you for select a surface or mesh to use. And now I'll hide that and go back into my rendered display mode. And you can see how that custom mapping object is now controlling the texture. And when you use some mapping methods like that custom mapping, the texture might look granular or pixelated for a moment. The advanced texture display will catch up and it'll quickly look much smoother. And that's how you use texture mapping in V5 Rhino. Thanks for watching.